how well that's going to work out for an extended drain. So you've got to go in a conservative direction and say until we can get our arms wrapped around this, we've got to stick with something that won't void your warranty. Okay, so in this process, the, um, the contention or the disagreement somewhat that I had with Mr. Peterson was that I think the diesel vaporizes out and he was saying no it doesn't get hot enough to vaporize out and the vaporization temperature for diesel is about 106, uh, 168 yeah 168 no I'm sorry 268 degrees is the vapor point for diesel okay it's pretty hot okay however I think the um, the samples that we saw are consistent with it vaporizing because the Duramax runs at 205 degrees. The Ford and the Dodge run at about 195. They're in a little cooler. Well, remember, oil runs 35 to 75 degrees hotter than the thermostat temperature. So because the Duramax is running around with a 205 thermostat, it's running that oil somewhere between 240 and 280 degrees, which it's getting hot enough to vaporize some of that diesel off. The Ford and the Dodge, what we saw on those was this continuing sample and building up more and more concentration. What we saw in some of the Duramaxes was a flat line, not showing any diesel contamination, okay? Which would tell me that temperature is very important. There's another part of this that I think, I know in the Duramax, and I'm not sure in the other two, but they use an under piston uh, oil cooler on the Duramax engine, which is a nozzle which basically squirts oil up against the bottom of the piston to keep the piston from overheating on the bottom side. I would bet you anything that the oil that squirts out of that and hits the bottom of that piston is well above 260 degrees <laughs> the bottom of that piston. So it's almost like they're their degas system is degassing the diesel by spraying the oil on the bottom of the piston and it's vaporizing and going out. Now these trucks now have a positive crankcase ventilation system. So if they're vaporizing the diesel, it's just picking it up in the PCV system, sucking it back through and burning it. So you'd never see it, it just disappears. So anyway, this problem is under investigation within AMSOIL's technical department. They are trying to determine how big a problem this is because when I first saw this and, and I've been looking at this and I was glad to get a chance to talk to him, I asked uh, Mr. Peterson, I said, well, I think there's two questions here that we really should consider. One is, are we just picking a 10% level or 4% or 5% and saying this is a condemnation level even if it doesn't show any increased wear? And he, he kind of looked down from it, looked puzzled and said, that's a really good question. Because the point I was making was the only reason we ever had the condemnation level of 4% originally was because through all analysis, we'd seen additional wear on an engine because we had 4% diesel in it. Well, how are these things working out? So we look at the oil analysis on all these pickup trucks, and I am telling you there is zero, zero iron wear increase in these trucks. And my point is as well, if we're not seeing the wear even though we're showing the higher concentrations of diesel then maybe we're being overreactive that this contamination is really causing a wear problem which, which is what we would be worried about so anyway he put that down and, and they're looking at this in a deeper look because it's not a simple thing because he told me he said well in the caterpillar engines now let me back up just a second caterpillar has a problem but it's not a regeneration cycle problem. Caterpillar has a problem with leaking injectors. And it's a big enough problem across the country that it's recognized by everybody, except Caterpillar. Because <laughs> Caterpillar would have to replace the injectors. So it's been such a headache for them that they are getting out of the over-the-road truck engines and going back to off-road tractors and just forget about this thing. It's, it's not a winning issue. But in these trucks that have fuel contamination that are Caterpillar engines, what's important to understand is that because you have a six cylinder Caterpillar engine, you don't necessarily have six leaking injectors. You could have one injector leaking, and if that injector is leaking, right, 
we don't know when I get to 10% or so fuel contamination, I don't know whether the increased iron wear that I see in the Caterpillar is coming from the one cylinder being washed down extremely or whether I'm getting anywhere from the other cylinders. So here's what I suggested to Mr. Peterson and maybe they're going to do. And that is to mix up batches of our oil that have 2%, 4%, 6%, 8%, and 10% diesel contamination and run the four ball wear test on them, which is what we run to determine the film strength of oil. And we ought to be able to tell in a hurry how much the film strength is de degraded by the percent of diesel. Where you lose your lubricant. Yeah, where it goes away or where you just immediately scar the, the ball. Because the four ball wear test has a cup with three balls in it here one ball on the top, hydraulic pressure is pressed down on it and the cup spins. Well the cup's full of oil so what happens is the balls are all moving they have to pick up the oil film to lubricate themselves. When the pressure is too much for the oil film it will scar the ball. So we measure the uh, diameter of the scar to see how big it is and that tells us how much it failed or how bad it failed. And so the four ball wear test was developed by Shell Oil Company it's accepted by all people as a uh, oil film test. So if we know what it is and we're worried about how well oil will perform, I think we have a laboratory test that would actually test fuel dilution in the oil and determine how it affects the four ball wear test. So I hope he follows up on that recommendation and does that because we need some real factual information of what's happening rather than just sort of uh, anecdotal, you know, if I saw this truck did this, this truck looked at this. Yeah, because you, you go and look at these oil samples on these trucks and see what Ford Motor Company says is drive your truck 100 miles, a minimum of 100 miles after the regeneration, then take your oil sample because they say all the diesel will be vaporized out if you'll go 100 miles. Okay, and Amsel says, well, we don't think it's vaporizing out at all. Well, I, I respond to that by saying to Mr. Peterson, if I put two quarts of diesel in every time I do a regen cycle and none of it is vaporizing out, pretty soon it's going to be coming out the fill pipe, you know, but I don't think we'll get that far because as soon as it hits the bottom of the crankshaft and does the egg beater effect on the oil down there, we're going to be shut down good because it's just going to mess everything out. So you can't be putting two quarts in every time you do this and then turning around and not filling the thing up to overflow. It's got to be going somewhere, so it's got to be vaporizing out. The other thing is, is that the regeneration cycles, they are uh, interesting because one of the guys up there bought his new truck, he has a Dodge, and when he first got the truck, he was running regeneration cycle almost every 100 miles. It was doing a regeneration cycle. It was bad diesel. Because remember, if I'm running bad diesel, what's it going to do? It's going to burn poorly and it's going to put a lot of ash in the DPF. And it's going to reach that differential pressure quickly and then it's going to throw on the regeneration. So what he did is he had this diesel additive that he uses. It's called Air Daddy or something like that. Anyway, what its whole purpose is, is a lot of the diesel you get is saturated with air. It's got too many air bubbles in it and it doesn't burn well because it, it doesn't get pressurized for the injection process to a high enough pressure because of the air in it. So you're getting a lot of drips and blurbs into the cylinder rather than a high pressure puff like it should be. So anyway, when he cleaned up his diesel, he went from this 100 mile regeneration cycle to, uh, what did he say it was, at least 1,000 or 1,500 miles. Okay, so one of the things that Ansel may look at, because I believe my brother-in-law and his diesel is using Ansel uh, ADF, the diesel concentrate, and I don't think he hardly has a regeneration cycle. I think it runs so clean with the diesel fuel additive that the ash buildup in the filter is virtually non-existent. So we're looking at some things here which may be good for us as Anzo dealers to understand this as we can tell people with the diesels, look, you've got to have good fuel, you need to run an additive, and uh, you need to do oil analysis. I don't care what the situation is in your, your, your pickup, you need to be doing some oil analysis to kind of have a handle on these things and determine where they're going because it's just a stupid idea. In fact, I heard one guy up there say there's a group, I guess, I think that own Dodges that are, are forming together to do a class action suit against Dodge over this because it's a brain dead idea to force diesel through the engine.